Well, welcome to See Here Love. I'm your host, Melinda, and we have a great show for you today. Not only am I joined by my two fantastic co-hosts, Cheryl and Joanna. Hey. Welcome. But we're also joined by two incredibly gifted guest hosts to help yes. us understand worship, what it is, why it's important, what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth. And later on, we'll hear from Albert Tate, the founding pastor of the Fellowship Monrovia Church in California, one of the fastest growing multi-ethnic churches in the United States, as he shares his thoughts on worship and the church. But before we get to all that, we are thrilled to have Mr. Yay. Drew Brown in the house. Yay. Drew, hold this up, I know, <laughs> famous plug, hold it up. <laughs> Drew Brown is the GMA Covenant Award winner, mm -hmm. worship leader, and producer. Welcome, hey. Drew. Yes. Welcome, Drew. Hey. And then we also yes. have... Yes. <laughs> yes. Ready? Sorry. Ready? We also have Brooke Nichols, also a GMA Covenant yeah. Award winner, yes. a Canadian worship leader, and songwriter with us today. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, my pleasure. I love this topic because I'm actually surrounded right. by worship leaders, yeah. writers, producers. I mean, I'm surrounded by lots of creativity um, is you know, the creativity is amazing in the <laughs> studio today but let's start off with this question drew drew brooke cheryl you know uh, joanna you're all in this world of worship why are you in it why have you invested and committed your life to worship leading not just in song but in other means of worship Hmm. True. For me, I um, there's something amazing, and I will use this word magical. I will say that mm -hmm. when a community of faith come together to worship, mm -hmm. there's something so just intangible and beautiful about that that I want to be a part of that. I'm compelled mm -hmm. to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I love teaching and mentoring and guiding people through the process, if you will, of mm -hmm. worship. Mm -hmm. Right. What worship actually is, what it can be, what it can look like, mm -hmm. and how we can be better worshipers, both within the context of church, but also as we live our lives in worship. Good, yeah. 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 Brooke, what about you? Yeah, I love... Um, I love worship, like the, the, the singing portion of worship. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in the presence of God, there's freedom and there's healing and there's restoration mm -hmm. um, and people can find hope. And yeah. I love to create a space. Um, I think about my church, for example. I love to create a space where people can encounter Jesus. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Joanna, you write worship songs. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, she does. Um, yeah. It's a new what, thing. Is, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and why? And why do you love it? And why do you think it's so important to do so? I think, well, I'll say I, it's a new thing for me, and it's one of those skills that I thought everybody could do it, and then you find out it's unique, mm -hmm. that not everyone can. And so I didn't know that other people, like when I hear sounds, when Drew, we've done this together, mm -hmm. we've done this together, yeah. when you when you have like sound, I know what the words are mm -hmm. for it. And I thought that everybody did. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, a thing that I have learned is unique to how I'm made, and I want to bring that to the church, mm -hmm. because I thought everyone could, and now that I know <laughs> that they can, I'm like, how can I be part of that then yeah. how can I use like language and ways of of seeing that I have or experience that I have to bring other people um, to give words because we all know those songs that are those songs we needed to sing but we didn't know until we heard them for the first time that yeah. we needed those words yeah. and so I love being able to be part of that that's uh, it's amazing amazing Shara what about you I know that you love to sing and yeah. lead people as well uh, and I, I really echo what, jo what Joanna said about writing I feel like worship is it's one of our heart languages to God mm -hmm. and I feel like it's um, it, it, it just the way it ushers us into the presence of God just instantaneously just the lifting of our voice the lifting of our hearts our hands um, and when you don't have the language that's what I love about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, it it crosses language barriers it mm -hmm. crosses those that that, that maybe can't even speak audibly. Like just when you don't have the language, it's yeah. just so loud, mm -hmm. it's so clear, it's so true. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that it's, it's just the way our heart can communicate yeah. to God. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that because I mean, in the context here, we're talking about worship and song, mm -hmm. but broader, you know, what is worship? Mm -hmm. You know, worship, you just said, you know, I worship in music and song, but there's, you know, other ways to worship. What are your thoughts about, because when people come to a church, they're like, oh, it's worship time. And we've kind of used it a little flippantly, like, oh, it's worship. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a big thing to think about and understand, be intentional about as a follower of Jesus or trying to understand, you know, within the church context. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? What is worship and how do we worship? Thoughts? 
Um, well, within the church context, we can worship through songs, mm -hmm. um, through the arts. We can worship through um, communion, through gathering the table. Mm -hmm. We can worship through our generosity, our tithes, our offerings. We can worship through service as we you know, help mm -hmm. the outer community and serve yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Pretty much anything that we do unto God in a way of saying, you're awesome, mm -hmm. we love you, yeah, we yeah. thank you, yeah. you are great, you are wonderful. Any kind of those outward expressions and inward mm -hmm. um, worship. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. When I actually was thinking about this question, what is worship, I, I was thinking of all these elaborate big answers and really it's just giving God the glory and mm -hmm. the honor in everything yeah. that we do mm -hmm. and yeah. say and touch. Yeah. And I thought, oh God, that's like, yeah, your that's, life. Yeah, that is your life. That's, that's everything, is, right? Yes, yeah. Completely. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's good. I think that's a good reframing yeah. too, because sometimes in the church context, we think worship is just singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's you know a yeah. good way to see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's been said, but I I feel like it's just giving tribute to God. When you think about people that w when you worship something, you're placing it above you. You're adoring it. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. putting it on its own mm -hmm. sort of awesome awe-filled place mm -hmm. and that's what we do with worship yeah. you know yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I think like for the church music is a huge part of worship it's, totally. it's why mm -hmm. the word gets tied to music for us it's a huge part of it and and it's been that way for thousands of years people who worship God sing and it's an unusual and Christian and Judeo-Christian thing mm -hmm. but I think it's an encouragement for people who don't deeply connect to music they should still sing mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but there are other ways we worship in our lives that are mm -hmm. like a more full way it's, it's just as you said Brooke about like our entire life in giving mm -hmm. honor and glory to him mm -hmm. so if, if music isn't the thing that gets people right. it's okay like there's lots of other ways that we can yeah. worship and connect with God yeah. Good. Yeah. you know there's a scripture verse in the Bible which where, you know, Jesus is talking with, you know, a Samaritan woman. And, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about some of the context, but he says about worshiping in spirit, you know, and in truth. And so, Joanna, let's recap. I think that's a really important verse because as we kind of look at worship, you know, Jesus himself, you know, talked about, you know, very um, specifically about worship yeah. when she had some questions. And then he said, well, you know, I want you to worship in spirit and truth. And it's like, well, what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So can you read the verse and then we'll give it some context mm -hmm. to that. It's John 4, 23 to 24. It's a bigger story, but this is where Jesus said that, but yeah. there's also context around it. Yeah, so Jesus is talking to a woman and he says, and she's asking questions about worship and where to worship and how to worship. And he says, the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The mm -hmm. Father is looking for those who will worship mm -hmm. him that way. That's John 4, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. And I mean, in many ways, it's kind of like a re another way of saying you need to be born again born of the spirit mm -hmm. that not like a physical birth but a spiritual birth that we can't worship God and connect with the spiritual world without having that new spirit within us mm -hmm. I mean that's I mean that's kind of what he's talking about mm -hmm. when he's bantering with this woman mm -hmm. um, but and, and when we talk about the truth and spirit well what is the truth Jesus is the way mm -hmm. the truth the life yeah. so we worship Jesus and through Jesus and by what he has done for us yeah. in the yeah. power of his Holy Spirit yeah Good. It's Brooke, good you had some thoughts about that, the spirit and truth part. Too. Yeah, actually, as uh, Steve and I um, lead worship together, this is something we've we've figured out. I grew up Pentecostal, so lots of spirit. <laughs> and he grew up um, in the CRC church, so lots of truth. And so it was really interesting yeah. coming together mm. and colliding our worship styles mm -hmm. and right. figuring that, yeah. like from this verse, worshiping in spirit and in truth and getting mm -hmm. that, that balance of what mm -hmm. that looks like. Yeah. Knowing God, like how can you worship God if we don't, if we don't know Him? Mm -hmm. So just yeah. knowing Him, knowing His Word, um, knowing his heart for us, like, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that, because it's an inside job, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> worshiping in spirit and truth, it, it immediately does away with all the outside trappings. Because we all try to, that's the trap of worship, we try to define what it is, mm -hmm. and the, the volume of it, and the style of it, and the yeah. intensity of it. Um, but, but the person that can't sing a note is worshiping as sweetly and powerfully and beautifully, oh, amen, yeah. right? Mm -hmm, yeah. The person that doesn't lift their hands is worshiping as the person that's laying out prostrate. It's not, it's not the outer, and I love that God, right. He's forever stripping away the optics mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. You know? so good. I spent yeah, many good. years as a, as a worshiper pastor, many, many years as a worship pastor, and one of the things I always just say and pray as people were coming in, as people started getting settled, I was like, let's um, now pray um, that 
um, that God will remind us of all the many things He's done for us in our lives. Mm. Um, also let Him remind us of who He is, but also who we are in Him. Mm, and yeah. so for me, the, framing it that way was kind of the spirit and truth thing. If you are thankful for all the amazing things that, you, that He's done for us, yeah. mm -hmm. your heart also moves from this hurried and rushed place, oh my gosh, I, we're late for church, oh, oh, da, 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 da. Mm. oh yeah, I'm thankful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This long list, oh. So also your heart and your spirit takes a posture, mm -hmm. a totally different posture than when you yeah. walked in. Mm -hmm. So now you're ready to worship in spirit. Mm -hmm. When your heart is in that place of like, thank you, God, you're awesome. I acknowledge you for who you are in my life, yeah. but also who I am too mm -hmm. in you. I am your child. You have forgiven mm -hmm. me. There's yeah. grace. There's mm -hmm. mercy. Yeah, that's the truth. And so, and so this yeah. truth yeah. where like, we need to make sure our theology is formed right so we can worship mm -hmm. in truth. Yeah. But there's that spirit which is like passionate and like yeah. a sense of like yeah. gratitude. So yeah, spirit and truth yeah. is yeah. killer. Yeah. And, and then the following verse, it's like that's how Jesus wants us to worship. True Amen. worshipers worship that way. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right, in spirit yeah. and in truth. Yeah. And and in that passage, I mean, it, it's one that I know that we'll have, you know, in the blog, and I think it's something that we need to go and read about. But she, she was talking to him, right, about like, well, where should I worship, and what mountain, and where should I These go physically, and what yeah. do I need to do? And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a second, with me. You're it, missing the point. You're missing That's the right. point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? You actually have me here, <laughs> sitting with you, knowing that you've been married to five men and the, and the you know the man that you're with now is not your husband so I, right. I know and see you and so you know in worshiping in spirit and truth is actually it's me you know mm -hmm. I, I am actually mm -hmm. the truth mm -hmm. and the one that I want you you know to worship and so it's it's a huge thing it totally mm -hmm. switched everything up and once she got it then she runs away and it's like everybody look at this guy Jesus because like, it's a beautiful he knows picture. everything about me exactly it's everything about yeah. me come come you know and then the disciples kind of walk over and go what anything happen yeah. <laughs> anything happen interesting and you know and so that whole picture and story is is is, is amazing mm -hmm. yeah um, what do you think are some of the roadblocks for people to worship and not just in singing but our whole lives is worship mm -hmm. Because I don't think we go around and go, hey, Cheryl, how's your worshiping <laughs> going today? <laughs> How are you doing in worship? I don't you know? know, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? You know, like, yeah. but, but, but maybe that's a good question. But what do you think are some of the roadblocks for ourselves and for others to say, actually, you know, my whole life needs to be of worship to mm -hmm. God? What blocks us in, that, in those areas? What do you think? Us. Hmm. Uh, we need to get out of our own way. You know, mm -hmm. I think that we we have tainted and confused and complicated not just worship, but just the gospel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. living out the gospel. It, it's become so so many trappings. Mm -hmm. I, at that word again comes to mind, mm -hmm. and I feel like um, it's about it's about identity. Mm -hmm. I love that knowing who God is who he is to you mm -hmm. and then in reflection once that understanding comes in then who I am in him yeah. and you can kind of start to strip yeah. away a lot of other stuff after yeah. that totally. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's good yeah. true some I, blocks some blocks yeah I think um, there's a sense of um, instant faith that kind of is in our mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. where we want all the information now. Um, if it takes too long, we want to do it. And so living this God life is, it's, it's a slow process. As every day he, um, we discover more about him and also more about us in him, um, our faith builds slowly. And so it's, it's one of those things where we can't rush our walk with God. Yeah. And so, and, and we can't be bored and we can't be like, oh, it's going to take too yeah, long. Yeah, like I put gotta, it in the microwave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly, right? Yeah. So um, sometimes the idea of like, I don't have time for that or I don't, uh, I don't want to spend that time to do the work, mm. that can yeah. be a huge block. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. There is no instant faith. It's just... Do That's the good. work. Do the work. Yeah. yeah. It's like marriage, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Joanna. Yeah. Well, I love what you just said about doing the work because I was thinking about. Um, I was saying in another another show that we did about David saying, "I won't bring anything." to God that costs me nothing, mm -hmm. no sacrifice that costs me, that is costly to worship. And and even in like a very practical context, you know, we've been in experiences of corporate worship where, or even by ourselves where, or like you self, feel self-conscious because someone may be looking at you or you're in your car and you're doing your own thing <laughs> and you're praying or you're talking to Jesus mm -hmm. or you're crying or singing or whatever. And then you realize there's like cars beside you and you become very self-conscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so as you said about getting in our own way, mm -hmm. it's this self-consciousness that I think prevents us. So there's this story, yeah. right, of David when he says, 
uh, I won't bring you a sacrifice that costs me nothing. But then there's this illustration of him where he's naked dancing before God. Right. This like full out, all in, mm -hmm. exuberant, free worship yeah. Yeah. without the self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all feel this like, oh, like who's looking at me or mm -hmm. what will they oh, think? And, and I know for me as someone who works in church, yeah. um, I am leading worship every time I'm in the room, not from, I, I am never That's someone right. who carries a microphone. It's yeah. a, like, I should not be given a, don't give me a microphone to sing. I don't mm -hmm. mean that, but I'm in the congregation and I, um, wherever I sit, yeah. I will be leading from that place. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think we all have that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. But then what if, uh, I, you know, it can get in my own way. I'm like, sometimes I need to cry. Sometimes mm. I need to be on my knees. Sometimes I need to raise my hands. Yeah. Sometimes I need to mm -hmm. not sing. Yeah. And, but then you can get self-conscious. So is anyone looking at me? Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Who cares? I call, <laughs> I call it being delivered of people's opinions. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 What about you? What are some of the roadblocks you think that people well, have in this area? I, I, People always ask, like, like, what do you do on a Sunday where you don't want to lead worship? You're not in the mood. And I'm like, <laughs> well, like, you know, have you gotten that before? Oh, and yeah, you're just like, yeah. okay, I get where, where your question's coming from. But, like, it's mm -hmm. not about me and my feelings and what my mood is about. Like, this is actually about creating a space where mm -hmm. people can meet Jesus. And, yeah. like, I need to get out of the way. Yeah. And yeah. so I think about... Uh, it's easy for us. So if I was also just someone sitting in the congregation, roadblocks for that would be, it's hard when you're walking through a tough time or yeah. something's happened in your life mm -hmm. and it's hard to turn your eyes to Jesus and say, you're still good God, even though I'm walking through this. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do in those situations yeah. is turn our eyes to Jesus and worship him because although the situation might be tough, um, the season might be hard, God is still good and worthy of our praise. Come yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Well, I think the best thing to do then at this moment <laughs> is to get our GMA Covenant Award winner yes. <laughs> to yes. sing yes. a song yes. as we worship. Oh, okay. Yes, yes which would that. mean oh. Brooke and Drew. Yeah, not, yes, not, not, I think not I hope us. you're, yeah, you're realizing that. I secretly yeah. hope you all pull up tambourines from under your chair. <laughs> yeah, great, great. Actually, funny yeah. you mentioned that. <laughs> I just had a drum machine. Yeah, yeah boom, right. boom. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, I always love music. Um, I always joke about I'm a congregational worship leader because I'm never there, love but it. I just love yeah. um, worshiping um, with everybody. Hmm. So maybe we could sing a song and maybe I, I could mouth the words along with you <laughs> um, or hum. But, yeah, I think it'd be great to hear one of your, I think, sort of favorite old worship songs or whatnot, old. or old or new or, or new. whatever one, a newer one. I love, um, just want a Grammy. What a beautiful name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that one. Yeah. I think it just exalts the name of Jesus, and I'm all, all right. about that. Let's do that. Okay, let's do it, Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Do it. Let's all right. Here we go. Right. Let's go ahead, try go that. Go um, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Mm. Love it. Beautiful. Love it. Thank beautiful you guys. Harmony. I know. Beautiful. <laughs> so you oh, yeah. There was a moment there. I'm like, I wasn't in the studio. Thank you so much. Well, I sat down for an interview with Albert Tate in Edmonton, Alberta, and captured his thoughts on worship and the church. Let's take a look. Worship shows up for the first time in the book of Genesis when um, Abraham takes Isaac up to sacrifice him. And when he sacrifices him, he uses the word. The word is translated there. He goes to worship. So worship will have many entities, but the core of it is sacrifice. Worship is not about me. Worship is about God. So worship isn't just about music. Oh, Because no. some people have, have equated, yeah. I'm going to go worship with yeah. singing. Yeah. Worship is a whole life endeavor. Mm -hmm. God just doesn't want the melody of your, of, of your vocal cords. He wants the core of your heart. He wants your hands. He wants your whole life. So our whole life worships God. So that makes sense now when Jesus says to worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. He wants right. everything. And a part of the idea of it being spirited and in truth is that you can be honest and tell the truth about where you are so that his spirit might show up in your life, even in broken places and broken spaces. So he, he wants all of you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Excellent. Yeah. Rick, it's so great to be with you. 
I love it. You have an amazing voice. Oh, How you. long have you been leading worship? I've been leading worship since I was about 14, which is a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I won't many say like years. how many, <laughs> like five years. You know, Rika, one of the questions that comes up is like, what does worship really mean? We immediately think worship is singing. Right. But tell me what your definition of what does worship mean and what does it mean to you? For sure. So I believe that as believers, I feel like our whole lives are worship. Mm -hmm. I think everything that we do from the moment we get up, even sleep actually is worship. Um, definitely I'm more involved on the music side, um, but I don't even really like to call myself a worship leader. Mm -hmm. I now change my language to I'm um, the music part of the worship service. Very so yep. yeah, to me it's much of a lifestyle. That's good. Yeah. You know, in the scriptures Jesus says to worship in spirit and in truth. Let's start with spirit. What does that mean, to worship in spirit? For sure. So um, we are totally spirit beings. Um, you know, that's what gives us life and I think when you're worshiping in spirit, it's just everything in you. It's not necessarily pretty, it's not necessarily <laughs> messy. Mm -hmm. I just think it's your real self. Yeah. yeah. And then it says, in truth as well. Why the truth part? Why do we need to worship in truth? Well, I think, again, as believers, there is this ultimate truth of who Jesus Christ is, and that no matter what we go through, there's this hope that we always have. So we can be going through very broken circumstances or very celebratory circumstances, mm -hmm. and we always have the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for us and the power of grace. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we can acknowledge our lives based on that, on spirit and in truth, we can't go wrong. I think that when we worship God, it's, it's like an actual decision. We have to decide. Yeah. Is he who he is? Who he says he is? Is he good? Is he going to take care of me? Whatever it is mm -hmm. that's happening. Or maybe we're in a position where all that's really being answered for us. But either way, it's deciding to put ourselves in a place where we can sort of lean back, rest, and experience yeah. who he says he is, which I find really hard. Really? So Why? don't give me, like, because I'm an emotional girl, yeah. right? So if my emotions are sort of telling me some information or if my situation is communicating information, sometimes I can find it really challenging. And I, I do think that's why we've gravitated towards the creative arts to help us, okay. right? Yeah. Because if we were just sort of cerebrally talking about worship, you know, we could do that. But then there's this thing of music or there's this thing of poetry or, you know, mm -hmm. great, great words. There's all these beautiful, tactile, artistic ways to help us get through the doorway of trusting God. So that's, that's, that's what I think. In the scriptures, Jesus says to worship in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about that, but what's your understanding? What, what do you mean, what do you think he meant by that to say, you know, I want you to worship in spirit and in truth? Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of really theologically <laughs> correct things, but yeah. I'm going to speak out of my relationship with the Psalms. Okay. So in, with, in the book of Psalms, David and his guys, they were writing uh, sort of songs, poetry, things, these little mantras to help us do this because I think of worshiping in spirit as the romantic, again, emotionally mm -hmm. connected, beauty-driven thing that I want to have with God all the time. Mm -hmm. But then I think about the truth being that I have a sick kid or I, I, I'm not feeling well or things are on the rocks relationally with someone or I'm just frustrated. Yeah. So when I put those two together, I really find solace in the Psalms because they tell me it's okay. It's okay. You can to be... lament and to be upset <laughs> yeah. and call yeah. out. And but... to really be where you are as a human, yeah. longing for this sort of eternal, romantic, beautiful spiritual experience. And the Psalms help me every day. Every day I read them like three times a day because otherwise I would lose focus real fast. Awesome. I do lose focus real fast, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Well, that was fun. I yeah. love that. I love your Thanks deep thoughts. Singing, I know. Thanks for Aww. singing. Any other last Beautiful. thoughts or takeaways about worship? To encourage our viewers, to encourage one another about mm -hmm. how can we worship God in spirit and in truth? What are our thoughts as we go? I just, I just really feel like to echo again that it's, you know, to, to uncomplicate it, to, to you know, um, strip it away. Um, and and not and to get out of our own way. I think we can overthink and get really caught up on. I love what everyone said. Joanna is hitting me hard about the you know the optics, mm -hmm. right? And to be delivered of people's opinions and and how you worship is beautiful to God yeah. Yeah. in whatever yeah. form it it yeah. takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brooklyn, it's good. Any thoughts? Yeah, I I just want to encourage people to like 
yeah, strip down and yeah. just be with Jesus. Because mm -hmm. um, in those moments, when you're quiet, when you're still, He can speak to you and you yeah. can hear Him. Yeah. Um, and it's just good to like, I love those moments uh, when it's just me and God. It's kind of like, yeah, you're right. No one's there. No one can <laughs> judge me or care what I sound like <laughs> if I'm crying or whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just get with Jesus. Get those yeah. moments. Mm -hmm. Okay, Drew? Um, my daughter said something this morning where she said, can Jesus fly? He can fly, can he? Because he's super cool and awesome. <laughs> and, and, and yes. I, right? And I was like, I think if we actually can look at our worship times at church, I mean, sung worship I'm talking about, if we can come to church with that realize that Jesus is just so awesome. Uh, so awesome. Yeah. That changes mm -hmm. the framework of how you enter yeah. in, how you communicate, how you sing, how you, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it makes things a little more real and bigger and broader. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, Jesus is awesome. I get this chance to hang out with him uh -huh. and his people. <laughs> that's, Woo! that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exciting. All right, Joe? Um, I always find worship is more meaningful when you have the stories behind the songs. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that people watching us today is gonna, are going to check out your music. Mm -hmm. uh, you, haven't, no, you haven't asked me to promote it, but, but I think that people should listen to your music because yeah. they're getting a taste of your heart for worship, and I think it's going to come through in the mm -hmm. song. So okay. if people are looking for, like, fresh songs to sing, mm -hmm. um, here are some examples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my Way to favorite promote. worship Way to leaders promote. at this yeah. table right now. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Brooke and Drew, for being with us and for being GMA Coven Award winners. Wow. I just wanted to hold it. I want you to accept this on your behalf. <laughs> Because it will never happen. <laughs> you know, thank all the little people. You are the thank little you, people. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Cheryl and Joanna, for your thoughts and for your own uh, worship leading in the places that you serve. So beautiful. And thank you to you viewers for being with us, for listening into our conversation. And if you have some questions, you're like, you know, I want to worship God in spirit and truth, then go to seeherelove.com, press say hello, and write us an email. Ask us for prayer, because we would love to do that. Yeah. And never forget that you are seen, you are heard, and you are deeply, deeply loved by God. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.